I'd read you my introduction, but I can read it super speed, so you wouldn't hear it. Let me just say very, very slowly that your geek history lesson on Bart Allen Impulse is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Pictograph Inman. Welcome to your Mind University because this is the podcast where we talk about, we talk about, not we trick about, one character, one construct, or one team in pop culture and tell you a little bit more about them. And today we are talking about a DC comic speedster, a little young boy who's been all over the DC universe and is probably going to be popping up on some TV screens very soon or he's been on your TV screen for years, if you're listening to this far, far in the future, Mr. Bartholomew Allen. Do you know his middle name? No, I I hope you're going to tell us that. Okay, I was going to... Does he have a middle name? He does have a middle name. Okay, he's sometimes known as The Flash, but most people know him as Impulse, and he's sometimes known as Kid Flash as well. He's got a bunch of nicknames. He is the best speedster who ever speedstered in the DC universe. I mean, I guess. Best speedster. I guess. Not the best Flash. Best speedster. It's he, he's your favorite speedster. He's not. the best speedster. <laughs> okay. Yes, and there is a difference, as we say all the time, between best and favorites. He is my favorite speedster. Yeah, I have been dying to teach this. I'm very excited. Um, Ashley, like we do with every single episode, we allow people to suggest episodes. Mm-hmm. If they go to our Twitter at GHL Podcast, if they go to our Facebook at facebook.com slash geek history lesson. Did I get that right? Yeah. They can suggest episodes. Did anybody suggest a Bart Allen episode? Oh, several many people have been requesting several Bart. Several many. That's a lot. For a long time. That's a big number. Several it many. Is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, Stop 16. Stop counting them and just read their 16 names. 16 people. <laughs> Scott B. Woy. Sam Martinez. Alexis N. Bowen. At a Bay Phrase. At Cam Senses. Grod Frankenstein. Acadia Stevens. At Deku's Multiverse. Nick Aronowski. Brandon Bolden. Matt. Matt Jacobson, Paul Graham, Drew Frisbee, Ken Rolo, Corey Burton, and at spider underscore hawk all requested. I talk about the best beats during the DC universe. Awesome. Good for them. Yeah. Very exciting. Well done, everybody. Thank you. We're finally rounding out our OG Young Justice Boys set of episodes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because we've already done <laughs> Seven Super, years later. We've done Superboy, Connor Kent. We've done Tim Drake, Robin a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, we even did Cassie. We did Miss Martian, too, I believe. Yeah, but she's not a founding member per the comics. Okay, splitting hairs here. That's true. All right. Is there anything else we want to say before we move into the first segment? No, let's do it. Let's get into the 10 cent origin, everybody. That is the first segment of Geek History Lesson where, if you need to know the Cliff Notes version of everything about Bart Allen, or you're going to Keystone City, you're walking into the giant mansion, and Jay Garrett goes, hey, do you know my grandson Bart Allen? Well, Ashley's going to tell you every little detail that you need to know in case you're going to Jay Garrick's awesome cocktail party. He is not Jay Garrick's grandson. <laughs> well, obviously. That's why Jay Garrick's asking about him. Okay. okay. Uh, Bart Allen is a DC comic superhero character. He is a metahuman and a member of the Flash family and a grandson of Barry Allen. Mm-hmm. And he travels back in time from the future. He was created by Mark Waite and Mike Waringo. His first appearance as a cameo was in Flash number 91 from June of 1994. And his first full appearance was in Flash 92 in July of 1994. His aliases include, already spoiled by Jason, Impulse, Kid Flash, and The Flash. And his team affiliations have been Young Justice, Teen Titans, The Legion of Superheroes, White Lantern Corps, not going to talk about that one, and the Justice League. His abilities include a genetic connection to the Speed Force, which grants <gasps> immense superhuman speed, superhuman stamina, superhuman reflexes, superhuman reaction, superhuman agility, intangibility through molecular vibration at high velocity, speed reading, molecular control, time travel, and dimensional travel by running faster than the speed of light, speed force clones, creation of vortexes, photographic memory, accelerated healing force, speed force aura, resistance to telepathy, and resistance to time stream alterations. Got it. Super speed. Yeah, the same thing. The same nonsense powers that every other Flash has. Could have just said super speed. (laughs) (laughs) And Bart has been voiced by Jason Marsden. 
um, who debuted and is the only person who has ever voiced Bart Allen. He debuted in the Mad cartoon uh, and in the Young Justice series. And he has been portrayed in live action by Kyle Gallner in Smallville. And at the time of this recording, will be portrayed in live action uh, by the uh, highly adorable Jordan Fisher on The Flash. I'm just going to throw this out right there. Uh, everybody, if you are listening to Jason and Jeremy John about Justice League mm-hmm. over at our Patreon.com slash John, then you know that Jason Marsden also voices Snapper Carr, a nemesis of mine on that podcast. So uh, this is a fun crossover. Yeah, he, James Marsden is all, Jason, Jason Marsden. Marsden, I'm sorry, uh, is all over. Yeah. Uh, it's, I did the same thing. It's very easy to right. like. Uh, to to auto correct that to and James, I, I don't mean any disrespect in that, but you know, Jason Marsden, I would like to extend this invitation to you. When Jason and Inman and I's original comic book series Jupiter Jet gets adapted into a cartoon, I would welcome you to do a voice on our show. Speaking of Jupiter Jet, look at that great transition, <laughs> friends. We've asked you to do this before, and you have always come through for us. We are asking you again. The Ringo Awards, which are named after Mike Waringo, co-creator of Impulse, are up again. The nominations are open, and we would love, love, love. You helped us bring the second volume of Jupiter Jet, Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio, to life. Help us get her nominated for a Ringo Award. We are asking that you go and nominate us for Best Kids Comic. If you want to go ahead and nominate anybody else, we would be so happy. The entire creative team did beautiful work on it. We should make this clear anyone can vote Literally for the nominations it anyone. is any fan all you have to do go is go to ringoawards.com there's a bunch of awards on there there's best artists best come but the one we're specifically the one we're the proudest about the one we want you to focus on is best kids comic slash graphic novel so when you get there type in Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. And friends you got Jupiter Jet volume one nominated so mm-hmm. we are calling on you to activate a super friends again Get Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio nominated. Ringo, R-I-N-G-O, awards.com. That's right. Any any help, any thoughts, any nominees, we would humbly consider. If you'd humbly consider us, we'd love that. Thank yes. you. Vote, Thank you. Vote early, Thank vote you. often. Thank you. Do it. all of your email addresses. Do it with your super speed. I know you have at least two. Yes. Let's move on. Jason, the next section is the meet cute. What is that? The meet cute is where Ashley and I, we stole a term from romantic comedies, and we tell you where we first meet it and cuted. Mr. Impulse. So, Jason, I would like you to go first because mine comes with visual aids. Uh, Where did you first meet Bart Allen? Ashley, I I need a little help for the My Meet Cute. Could you tell me again um, the issue that was his cameo appearance? Flash number 91. Okay. I read that issue. That is My Meet Cute for Bart oh Allen. Um, I got that issue. I've told the story several times about how I, I would always get comics from Walmart and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And Walmart back in the day would always have these really cool packs of like 10 issues mm-hmm. in it. Like you could get like 10 comic books for, I believe at the time it was $5 actually. Uh, Flash 91 was one of those comic books in nice. one of those packs. That is the, and it was the Mike Waringo also like that. And then I was able to get his first full appearance, which I think is the cover where he's running at the camera. Is, yep. That was also in another pack I bought. So I was Give able to shout get... out to whoever curated the pack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whoever curated the packs, I think was always like slipping in a flash issue and they were doing them in order. Um, so that's how I met and cute did. Uh, I, I've known who impulse was for a long. Now I don't know what year I read those comics. That's fine. But I would guess 95, 96 mm-hmm. would be my, my guess. But um, yeah, I've known impulse. From his very first appearance. Oh. So uh, this doesn't happen very often, but there you go. Uh, Ashley, where did you first meet and cuted uh, Bart Allen? Uh, so I first met and cuted Bart Allen in the first issue of the Jeff Johns Teen Titans run, where he is kind of the only one who's excited to be part of the team. And he runs out and he hugs Robin and he's so happy to be there. And what's so special about that moment to me is that uh, when uh, Patrick Gleason did his Young Justice run, he aped that when Bart mm-hmm. comes and hugs Connor again. And that original run is drawn by the great Mike McCone. Yes. Um, and he's always been my favorite speedster from that very moment. And in fact, uh, back in my day, children, we used to talk on something called the MSN Messenger. The MSN Messenger. And on the oh, MSN Messenger. Oh, I remember the days of yes. the MSN Messenger. I used to have a Mr. Bart Allen as my picture. Uh, hold on a second. Let me turn on the MSN Messenger here. Oh, tune it in. <laughs> Especially if your dial up was not working. Oh, hello, Speedster Girl 78. And uh, my MSN Messenger icon for a long time was the cover to Impulse number 32, which I'm going to show Jason right now. Okay. 
<laughs> oh dear God! That's how I comported that myself. Was, everyone, <laughs> just okay. If you, I will share this on our social. We're gonna share it at GHL Podcast on Twitter. But uh, just to describe it to anybody that you know is probably driving the car or on a subway right now. This is an insanely detailed <laughs> picture of Impulse stretching out his mouth and looking like a madman. Yeah, he's making a face. Um, fun fact, this is so cool because the cover you're showing me, mm -hmm. uh, what's the issue number again? Uh, Impulse 32. 32. That was, uh, by the way, this is why this back in the day was my late 90s, is like my favorite DC period, because that month was when DC decided to do all these like headshot yes, yeah, issues. Yeah. The, uh, the Tim Drake one is awesome. The Kyle Rayner was. So uh, every issue across uh, DC Comics were all like headshot close-ups and every one of them are iconic. What They're I love amazing. about that image in particular is it tells you exactly who Bart is, particularly during the Impulse series. So that was my MSN Messenger icon. What was the issue number again? Uh, Impulse 32. Thank you. Uh, for years and years and years and years, there's like one person who listens to this podcast who can attest to that. Now, let's move into the next and the longest section of the podcast, the History 101. Jason, what is that? It's the main meat of the lesson. It's not the side dish. It's the... Very thing you come to this podcast for, where she's going to tell you everything you need to know about impulse, probably more than you ever have wanted to know. I do want to say, if you're that over enthusiastic vegan who came at us on Twitter for using the phrase main meat of the lesson, maybe it's impossible meat. I don't know. Hey, I didn't say it was real meat. <laughs> yeah, but somebody took great offense to our use of might that be, phrase. Might be rubber meat. Uh, so, <laughs> so maybe they won't listen. Might be I rubber. Don't know. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, durian meat. Could be triple meat. Sure. Okay, do you want to guess Bart's middle name? So he's Barry's <sighs> grandson. grandson, which means his father. I'm going to give you that. His father is Barry's son. Who is Don. So Bart's Don middle Allen. name is? Is it Don? It's Don. Bartholomew Don Allen uh, is a cameo who was referenced in the death of the Tornado Twins. That's when we first meet him. Yes. Um, as the son of Don Allen, the male Don, D-O-N. Uh, his name there is only referenced as Barry Allen too. So I'm really glad that they uh, changed that around. And his father, Don Allen, uh, is executed in the year 2995. So he has his uh, tragic superhero origin very, very young. He doesn't appear again until he shows up in the main Flash series, um, which is like uh, his first appearance uh, as the cameo and then the full uh, issue, which we talked about earlier. And this leads directly into his own solo series titled Impulse. So... When, when Barry Allen 2, Baby Barry Allen Jr. makes this cameo, it's in a Legion of Superheroes uh, issue. So, Jason, did you know that Bart is actually a Legion of Superheroes creation? Um, I didn't know that technically he was a Legion of Superheroes mm -hmm. creation. Um, he's he's related. I mean, and he shows up in a Flash yeah, comic yeah, for the yeah, very first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, it's been in the rules a little bit. Uh, yeah, if you want to be arbitrary about what Wolverine's first appearances are, as are well. Are we going to talk about Bart's mom at all? Uh, not really. So if you want to bring that up, let's, let's talk about her now. Uh, well, listener, you may not know this, but especially if you're a fan of the Flash TV series, you know that Eobard Thawne is a very big part of that show. Yes. Eobard Thawne, of course, is with the reverse Flash, a very classic, um, Flash villain. Bart's mom is, uh, Melanie Thawne. Uh, Eobard's uh, I don't know or, if Ebard's daughter, well, but in that family. Well, implicitly his daughter, yes. I don't know if it's ever been confirmed. Someone yeah, will tell me. They're in that. I don't know, because I think they're in the 31st century, but I, I always thought it was interesting that Bard is sort of the connection point of the Thawne and Allen family. Yeah, maybe that's why they decided to make him not a great speedster. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Then in 1994, Bart really debuts on the scene in Flash Volume 2, number 92, which is the cover that Jason referenced earlier. Um, and it's kind of important for you to know that this happens post-zero hour so jason what is zero hour zero hour is an event that was created by the masterful dan jerkins every dc comic got a zero issue and most of them were spectacular some of them had foil covers but mainly it was how jordan went crazy called himself parallax and he decided to reset the entire DC universe. He went back to the creation of time. It didn't work out. Of course, he didn't reset the universe and all the DC heroes fought him. But it's noted because I know that Bart is going to be connected to another crisis coming up in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, Zero Hour is the 10th anniversary event of Crisis mm -hmm. on Infinite Earths. So, Jason, can I have a retcon alert, please? Um, oh, boy. Oh, hold on. Hold on. This The crisis has affected our soundboard. Hold on. Ah! 
There it is. So Bart has existed for um, one tiny cameo in a Legion of Superheroes, and then he gets a retcon because Zero <laughs> Hour obviously changed a lot of things. So post Zero Hour, Bart's parents, his dad wasn't put to death and he wasn't raised by his mom for a bit. It's retconned that they were killed by the Dominators. Arrowverse crossover event fans should recognize those aliens. Uh, but Bart was still a baby when they died. But he wasn't your typical baby. So Bart came out the womb with full super speed and all of its associated abilities that we talked about earlier. Which is not normal. Because he was a male baby. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. whereas his female cousin, Jenny Ognots, who later becomes excess for our Flash fans, mm -hmm. uh, didn't get her powers until she was a teen because misogyny. From a story perspective, this is really important because like Jason mentioned, it kind of sets Bart apart as like a wunderkind among the speedsters of his generation. Um, kind of like how in Legend of Korra, Korra is able to master the elements way earlier than Aang did in The Last Airbender, even though he's 10 times the avatar she ever was. Fight me on Twitter. Then the multiverse was restored. Bart's future continuity was shunted off to Earth 2047, having never existed. And he was born on a parallel Earth to Earth 1. And so then they brought him back to Earth 1 and just said he was simply born, quote unquote, in the future. So before he had done anything, we are up to three retcons. Jason, we're about 15 minutes into this podcast. Are we? Is Bart Allen's story already too complicated? Um... Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, y yeah, I don't know. Uh, I want to, so I haven't reread Bart's origin mm -hmm. anytime recently. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know this answer, this is fine. But um, I don't know if he got his powers early just because he was male. I no, 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 think no, no, he no. got his powers early because, and correct me if I'm wrong, Professor, did he, wasn't he like, wasn't his aging sped up? So I'm going to get into that. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Am I jumping out, ahead? I'm just pointing out like from a narrative perspective, okay. I find it very freaking suspect that he had a, a cousin of the same lineage who yeah. was a female who wasn't as good as him right out the womb. Like that is, it might not have been intentional, but that is what implicit misogyny is. And that is what patriarchal yeah. storytelling is. It was, nobody was trying to be awful to excess, but it's not equitable and it's not that for a reason. No, that's, that's fair. All. But I, I, I was just saying, like, I was I, I was just pointing out that I was like, I think there's a story reason for why he had his powers. Yeah, early. but it kind of strikes me as the same way. Like Harry Potter is born with an innate talent and uh -huh. Hermione Granger, who's already better than him, doesn't get to be as powerful as him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not to use a turfy metaphor, but so part of Bart being born with super speed, like Jason said, rather than acquiring it uh, through puberty or tragedy, which happens to a lot of the other flashes, they get a lot of chemicals and lightning spilled on them, um, meant that it sped up all aspects of his life, including his metabolism, which became hyper accelerated. Uh, and while this means it's probably very easy for him to lose weight, it also means that he ages faster than a normal human being. Um, so want to bet how long that sticks around in his story? Not long. Is it part of continuity now? Absolutely not. But as a result, by the time Bart was two years old, he appeared to be 12 years old. When you meet Bart um, as Impulse, he's like arguably 12 or 13 years old. So you have to know that he's actually maybe three, uh, which Im I think implies why he's so kind of emotionally stunted and immature compared to some of his peers, even in the Impulse book. So in order to prevent developmental disorders, Bart was educated at super speed inside a virtual reality machine uh, designed to simulate the outside world for him but match the quick pace at which he was developing. A uh, holodeck. Yes, basically. Also, that was, I remember reading it. a tube. That, oh, I also remember reading that in the 90s and being like, oh, this is very, virtual reality. Uh, yeah, what a nightmare, man. Yeah, uh, everybody knows the, uh, you remember that really bad virtual reality movie, The Lawnmower Man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, virtual reality was like the thing in the 90s. So it like, still it, is. It doesn't surprise me that it, now it's augmented reality. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it quickly became clear that the machine was not working the way anyone had hoped it was. So Bart's grandmother, Jason, who is Bart's grandmother? Uh, Iris Allen. That is right. Sent him back in time. And Iris lit West Allen. Literally threw him into the arms of Wally West and was like, good luck, bye, uh, who was the Flash at the time. I, I also wanted to bring up, too, here is an interesting part where um, you talked about that they do get 
rid of the aging thing very quickly. Yeah, because how do you sustain that without murdering him by the end of the first storyline? I don't remember how they solved that, but I know Wally is is the reason how they solved it. I will tell it. you. Oh, oh you when, don't? I will tell you when we come to I, it. I'm sorry. I keep no, jumping no, 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 no. It's good. Um, it's fun when we both know what happens to these characters. Mm-hmm. So like any good once removed uh, relative, Wally challenged Bart to a race around the world. Like you do. And the speed expended um, that he expended running shocked his metabolism back into being normal because comics and there's no more rapid aging issues because Wally was like race around the world kid yeah but so that but that's great actually that's a great piece of writing like I will give a little a tip of the hat to Mark Way there because like, I gotta get rid of this well <laughs> when Bart first shows up Wally hates him yeah uh, well everyone kind of does yeah and every and which is unfair he's literally a th- three-year-old he's a three-year-old he's he's, he's a baby he's a walking talkie three-year-old you pro- have a duty of care look we're lucky that he's not still in diapers uh what a sweet baby angel i love this poor boy so much <laughs> can you imagine if impulse like do you think that was in the pitch where <laughs> mark way was like let's put a diaper around side the outside the impulse and they were like i'm mark, gonna i'm sorry. gonna just cut this discussion uh, right pre- here previous geek Hester lesson guest mark wade i'm sorry no <laughs> <laughs> uh so since he was raised in a tube bart was pretty bad at being in the world he didn't understand danger he often got himself in a bunch of trouble emotionally and physically and uh wally thought bart was too much to handle so yeah. he fobbed him off on max mercury please continue to request max mercury at ghl podcast uh, and we might get to that episode this year who's basically a grumpy Maybe. old well, retired guy he's not a grumpy old retired guy he is the first speedster he's in the, the zen DC master of the speed he force. is a zen uh cowboy speedster my friend i just reread impulse he is a grumpy old retired guy Look, you'd be grumpy too if you went from a universe where horses and pickaxes were the most advanced technology you had uh jason yeah do you know where max mercury lived when bart allen moved in with him louisiana no uh mississippi no somewhere in the south yes <laughs> Okay. Manchester, Alabama. I was uh, pretty close. Which, I mean, I don't know American geography. You could be. <laughs> which is a real place. It is an unincorporated yeah. community. If you live in Manchester, Alabama, we want to hear from you at GHL Podcast. By the way, how's your, bar- how's your barbecue? Yeah, will you send us some? Yeah, how's your barbecue? Initially, Bart was the one who came up with the code name Impulse, although it's retconned in Impulse number 50 that Batman gave him that name, but I choose to believe that he gave the name to himself. Um, I actually think this is like a reaction to Superman naming Nightwing. That Batman gets the name Impulse. I don't know he if that has name anything to do with somebody else's sure. sidekick. Okay. This Batman call him impulsive? Is he that asks, the idea? He's like, don't be so, Im- like, don't act on impulse. And the Bart like, oh, I like it, impulse. I, no, it's ah, not. Ah, it's really ah, exactly. This is my impulse impression, right? Yeah. yeah Hi. Kind of Carmen. Hi, Bart <laughs> Allen. Uh, who would you rather be named by, Jason? Batman or Superman? Superman, of course. I know, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Once his superhero identity was securely in place, Bart did pretty much what every other teenage superhero in the DC universe does, join the Teen Titans for about five seconds before Connor Kent's Superboy, Tim Drake Robin, and himself broke off and founded Young Justice. We're not going to talk too, too much about Young Justice because I already told you we did an entire lesson on them, but the most important thing is that Bart was a founding member. While he was on the team, he was uh, granted a spaceship by a sultan from space, uh, which Young Justin, U- Justice used to fly around the world during his tenure and he learned while on young justice that he could make speed force duplicates uh, like we talked about in the 10 cent origin and bart was able to use these duplicates a couple times to save his teammates he then promptly had a crisis of ethics when his first duplicate was killed uh, and this happened during our worlds at war jason do you know what our worlds at war i do Do what is it do you know what it is what is it? It's where Imperiax, basically DC Comics' Galactus, shows up and eats some planets. There you and go. And Superman has to fight him. It's a big Superman event. Yes. And Young Justice actually uh, has one of the best tie-ins, yeah, actually. Yeah, they do a pretty good job, but his duplicate dies and he has a crisis over it. So grief over his duplicate is ultimately what leads Bart to quitting Young Justice. And then everyone kind of rage quits after that and then the team falls apart. Not long after that, Max Mercury disappeared. Uh, but Bart was still an actual child, so he went to live with Jay Garrick and his wife Joan because somebody had to look after him. Mm-hmm. Uh, this happens like five seconds before Tim reforms the Teen Titans. This is the Jeff Johns Teen Titans, the one that you classically think of Bart being a part of. Uh, and he goes to join him again and have his kneecap blown out by Deathstroke. And I mentioned this because I read this comic about 15 years ago, and I can still see the splash page where Bart's kneecap is blown out. It is seared into my brain. Thank you, Mike McComb. Uh, and like I said, fun fact, I had Bart on my Amazon messenger. And so remember I mentioned Bart being shot in the knee. So he has to have his kneecap replaced with a prosthetic one. 
And while recovering, because he can't run on it, he reads the entire San Francisco Public Library, designs himself a new costume, and goes by the name Kid Flash from this point forward until he doesn't anymore. Then, during the Titans Tomorrow storyline, which is like a weird alternate Titans where we see them in the future and they're all bad, Bart makes his final ascension to the mantle of the Flash after the previous Flash died in A Billion Crises Ago. During this story, there are multiple Bart Allens. One Bart Allen stole speed from another Bart Allen to become more powerful, and the Bart Allen on the Titans of Tomorrow is actually a spy for Titans East, working for the future cyborg, who is dating Rose Wilson. Um, It's very weird and convoluted, and kind of, I think, is a precursor to Bart's time as the Flash later on, which is weird and convoluted. Then, Infinite Crisis happens. Jason, what is Infinite Crisis? Infinite Crisis is where Superboy Prime punches the universe, um, resets a lot of retcons, and they try to uh, bring back their old planet, and the multiverse comes back. Yes. So after Superboy Prime killed a number of members of the Teen Titans, Bark, ta- Bark, Bart, my son Bort, Bart takes it upon himself to put an end to the massacre. So he joined forces with Wally West and Jay Garrick to run at top speed in the Speed Force. And this is the same story where Wally turned into pure energy and disappeared for a million years so we could justify bringing back Barry Allen. But Bart didn't need to fear because Johnny Quick and Max Mercury, remember he was missing? He was actually absorbed into the Speed Force at the time because that's what happens to every speedster. Appeared out of nowhere to save the day and throw Superboy Prime in prison, which of course he promptly escapes from. Bart follows Superboy Prime into an alternate reality Keystone City where he lived for four years until he returns to Earth One with Superboy Prime in tow. So he appears in Tokyo because why not? Tokyo's pretty cool. And he has Superboy Prime and he's like, let's throw him in jail. But Bart doesn't look like his cute, adorable, floppy hair drawn by Todd Nux self. He is an adult man and he is wearing Barry Allen's original Flash costume. He remembers virtually nothing of what happens before his disappearance. Um, But because he's a good guy underneath it all, he teams up with Superman and basically every other superhero to fight in the Battle of Metropolis. And they're like, I guess we need a Flash, so this is fine. Bart's memories slowly start to come back to him. During the course of this fight, he defeats Superboy Prime again and claimed that the act took away all of his powers, which is a lie. Uh, And this is a lie... Because Bart is trying to protect the secret that the Speed Force um, had not come back at this time. So he still has like residual super speed and abilities. But they during this storyline, they're like, oh, the Speed Force, no one can connect to it. But we can still run fast because that's interesting, right? No, the Speed Force is like the single most interesting thing about the Flash. Stop taking away the Speed Force. Jason, Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with adult Bart Allen? Not really. Okay. When you think about Bart Allen as a character, do you want to see him as a sad 20-year-old man? Nope. Me either. But in order to protect himself and the existence of the Speed Force, Bart basically quits being the Flash. And what do you do when you quit being the Flash? Well, you move to Keystone City, where you've never lived. You go to work in the Keystone Motor Factories making cars, which I don't think you've ever driven. And you get yourself a roommate named Griffin, who's kind of a real butthead, and then slowly is revealed to be the supervillain, the Griffin. Imagine that. That's like the Ray level naming conventions. Bart became the Flash again to fight the Griffin, moved to Los Angeles. Hooray! When went to work in forensics, just like his uncle Barry Allen had. I kind of like the idea of him working in forensics, and I like that it's an homage back to Barry Allen, uh, particularly given his name, but it's kind of a weird, sad version of Bart. I have a feeling it was probably pretty connected to CSI at the time, because CSI would have been like heavy Super in the ratings. Hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Bart became, oop, I said Bart became the Flash again. At this time, both the Justice League and the Teen Titans were also courting Bart to come back on their teams because they were both uh, in severe lack of a speedster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was also when Teen Titans kind of like randomly had adults, um, like Cyborg was on the team and adult Beast Boy was on the team and Starfire was on the team. And then there was also the whole new crop of like vaguely 14 to 16 year old kids. Mm-hmm. Bart decided that he wanted to go with the Justice League and be a real grown-up Flash, um, although said he would not take an official position until he felt it. he was ready. Uh, Bart had a few more kind of standard superhero adventures before Zoom. Who's Zoom, Jason? Um, 
Are you talking about Hunter Zolomon? Mm -hmm. uh, he's the sort of second reverse Flash, but he's called Zoom. Uh, he's a guy just trying to make uh, Wally West better. Yeah, he comes back in time to attack Bart Allen with the rogues, and we begin the saddest chapter in baby Bart Allen's life. Now, Jason, we've talked about the rogues a lot, um, mm -hmm. particularly when we say the rogues. Of course, we were referring to the Flash's rogue mm -hmm. gallery. Who do you think is the best of the rogues? Uh, I mean, I personally like Mirror Master. But I like the Scottish Mirror Master the best, which is the one that they don't use anymore. Is he the think. third Mirror Master? I think he's the second one. I like him the best. Uh, McCulloch, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like the original Mirror Master. Um, I don't know. Behind that, it's probably Captain Cold. I, I, I will say this about the rogues. I think the rogues all have goofy costumes. And they all need to be redesigned. But they keep keeping them in their original costume, no matter what. Because people think it's eclectic and kind of cool. And I, I'm just not a fan of that, so... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, devil's advocate. Not that I'm really looking to defend the rogues. Mm -hmm. All superhero costumes are silly. Yeah, but like... But I know what you Captain mean. Captain Cold yeah. wears a furry parka, so like, you know, it's weird to me. Yes. It, it It's a little too dated for me. That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. In order to take on and defeat the rogues and their silly costumes, Bart Allen revealed himself to be the Flash and draw their attention away. And they immediately got into a huge fight because, again comic books so rather than respecting this move of revealing himself to be the flash the rogues threw bart into a machine built by inertia another kind of speed force villain uh which drained the speed force from whoever the person inside was who happened to be bart allen bart loses all of his powers the black flash shows up the black flash um kind of being the death of the flash universe and flash fans immediately knew that the sweet baby angel was going to die and go away for a few years the machine becomes increasingly unstable and threatens to unleash the speed force directly on the west coast of the United States and destroy it immediately because he's in Los Angeles at the time. And the rogues panic, uh, which leads to Captain Cold, Heat Wave, and Weather Wizard say their names, uh, murdering Bart in cold blood. Why did you say say their names? Uh, um, because they're bad guys. So you got to say their names. You got to name the name because these three of all the rogues who are gathered, these are the three who specifically kill Bart. Okay. Because uh, there are other rogues present who are just sort of like running around flailing their arms in a vague panic. So, Jason, dying inside a death machine, is this a good death in the scope of all comic book deaths? Superman, Batman, Barry Allen. Does Bart Allen's death stack up? So they were sucking. OK, give it to me again. They were sucking the speed powers out of they him. they were sucking the speed force out of him. And uh -huh. it was building up all of this power and it uh -huh. was threatening to uh, destroy the West Coast. So Captain Cold, Heat Wave and Weather Wizard killed Bart Allen to shut the machine down. Did they ever specifically say like what they were planning to use the speed force was? No, or like, was it going to power some doomsday not. machine or their cars not. or their washing of machines? Not. So they just want to trying to take his powers. Away. They just wanted to fill up a Tesla battery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, although it's not uncommon for a flash to die in a speed machine because mm -hmm. that's kind of how Barry Allen died in crisis. Yeah. Or before he officially died, he was like trapped in a speed. He was powering the anti-monitor yes, for yeah, a while. Yeah. yeah. So, like, when you look at it that way, it's sort of homaging Barry. Mm -hmm. um, but the stakes don't feel high enough, right? Well, the problem with it is is that we only got to know this Flash for 12 issues before they killed him off. he dies in issue 13, yeah. Yeah, so, like, there's that's the problem. And most of it is him fighting his, like, crappy roommate. Yeah, like, this is going to be, this is going to sound, like, very arbitrary, but, like, if that death had happened in issue 25, mm -hmm. then no, I, I know exactly what you mean. Then I would give it to you because then I'd be like, oh, they knew from the beginning they were going to kill this guy and they they built to it. But I don't think they knew they were killing him. I think there was like an off chance and they, I mean, look, you, okay, so do, you, do, do you know who wrote that issue? Margaret Gunnheim? Yes. Uh, who has publicly stated that Bart's death was an editorial choice okay. and it was not his choice. Um, you reread this run recently, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. um, is there, let, let me ask you this. In the first five issues of this run, mm -hmm. do you get the feeling they're going to kill him? No. Okay, so it comes, at, it kind of, if you're reading this series, it comes out of left field. In my opinion, yes. Okay. So, like, again, I'm not against killing him mm -hmm. if they build to it, but mm -hmm. apparently they didn't build to it. So I'm going to say bad death, bad choice. Fair. Bad choice. Lesson over the. And thank you for the world's shortest lesson. Uh, just I kidding. I think we've had shorter, actually. Uh, I don't think so. Groot was shorter. Well, <laughs> that's fair. Uh, we're going to talk about Bart's funeral. 
at Bart's funeral, Jay Garrick, Cyborg, Wonder Girl, and Robin all give eulogies, which ended in a goodbye video that Bart made for his friends in the case of his death. It's super sad. Was he an adult or was he a kid in the in the video? No, he's a kid. It's like young Bart. He may, oh, how, did, how did he know? Well, because you can always you can always plan on an early death. I think if you're a superhero. That's pretty morbid. It's very sad. Uh, A statue of Kid Flash is erected outside of Titan's Tower next to Superboy's statue and inside the Hall of Fallen Heroes. In some continuity, some continuities don't have a Hall of Fallen Heroes inside Titan's Tower. I like the idea that they do. And mourners flock to the Flash Museum to hold a candlelight vigil in Bart's honor because he died as the Flash. Uh, Wally avenges Bart's death. Uh, for which he holds himself responsible, freezes Inertia's body in the Speed Force while leaving his brain active to torture him for all time um, as punishment for what happened to Bart. In everyone's favorite series, Final Crisis, Legion of Three Worlds, Bart Allen is resurrected as a teenager once again, the best version. Uh, And he is resurrected by my favorite Legionnaire, Brainiac 5. So this is just like an Ashley perfect story. Uh, Bart doesn't return to the Flash continuity until the Lightning Saga, which is fairly contemporarily contemporary uh, to the time of this recording, basically because um, Brainiac 5 wanted to use Bart to defeat Superboy Prime, but he sends Bart back to the 21st century through the Speed Force with the help of the Lightning Lads and Lasses and Excess and Barry Allen, who was bouncing around the Speed Force at the time, um, who Bart mistakenly believed was Max Mercury, so he follows him, but it actually turns out it's Barry Allen. Yeah, that was a tough paragraph to get through. Flash time travel gets really very confusing super quick. Just wait until someday Jason teaches a five-part Legion of Superhero episode. Uh, it's not looking likely, but yeah. <laughs> At this point, we have more requests for Max Mercury. So brought, Bart is brought back to life, and... <sighs> Five seconds later, the Legion be legioning, so they bring back Superboy as well. Then, in Flash Rebirth by Jeff Johns, Bart grapples with everything that has changed since his death, including Barry Allen's return from the grave, multiple Teen Titans team, um, and Bart, in fact, is so unhappy by Barry's return, much like myself, that when everybody decides to go to Barry's Welcome Back to Life celebration instead of Bart's Welcome Back to Life celebration, he says he wishes that things would, quote, go back to the way it used to be, end quote, um, when he's talking to Robin and Wonder Girl, who are the only two people there. Me too, Bart. Me too. Jason, do you think after being the Flash and sacrificing his life that Bart is justified in feeling this way about Barry bringing back to life? You mean about Barry coming back to life? Yeah, yeah, about coming back to a world where Bart is, where Barry's also there. It, yeah, I mean, the whole thing is just kind of weird mm-hmm. because that's also a period of the DC Comics uh, in betweenies, kind of. Well, it's a weird thing. It's 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 like so many people, like Hal Jordan had just come back. Yeah, Barry had just come back. Yeah, Batman had just come back. Impulse had just come back. Oliver Queen had just come back. Wonder Woman had died like five years earlier and just come back. Yeah. So like, it's Batman's ha- about to die and come back. Well, that's what, I think Batman at this point is back. Oh, yeah, um, I don't know. So it, it's just weird all around because you have like seventeen characters that have all like had massive deaths and then they all had massive resurrections and you're kind of <laughs> like, well, how do how does any of them matter more than the other? Yeah, totally. Uh, Bart is involved in Blackest Night. Check out our Blackest Night Club episodes and Flashpoint and some Teen Titan stuff, but it's all pretty minor for him. So we're going to skip right ahead into the recent future and talk about DC Rebirth. Jason, what's DC Rebirth? DC Rebirth is a soft reboot that DC Comics did in 2016. Basically, um, continuing the New 52 reboot. Um, yeah, that's about it. With lighter costumes. I mean, basically. So in the... In DC Rebirth, there is a book called Titans. It's basically, they were Uh like, there are too many 20-year-olds on the Teen Titans. Give them their own team. So they have um, a a storyline where they blip into the future um, and they see weird evil Bart Allen from the original Titans Tomorrow storyline, the adult spy, possibly bad Bart Allen, and adult spy, possibly bad Bart Allen, also appears in the Super Sons of Tomorrow 2018 storyline. Um, and a statue of him is seen inside the Flash Museum throughout DC Rebirth and the Flash Rebirth storyline. But OG Bart Allen, adorable teen Bart Allen, doesn't show up again in the mainstream continuity until a few more years. Uh, basically, Wally West and Bart Allen break the force barrier and they unleash a bunch of other forces and Impulse runs out along with them in the best issue of The Flash of the Modern Age 
in my opinion, with an all-time great final page. Uh, immediately, as all young heroes do, he joins back up with the Teen Titans and Young Justice and gets an adorable reunion with Connor that I talked about earlier on in this episode. <sighs> and that is where I am going to leave off our lesson on Bart Allen before we accidentally spoil any current continuity. End tweet. Okay. What do we do next? The next, we're going to the, well, you said in tweet, so you kind of, I was like, are we going to the, the teaching tweet already? That's impossible. But actually, <laughs> it's going to the recommended reading, where if you go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading, you can find all of Ashley's choices for impulse reading. You click on the widget, you get the book at your house, and a little bit comes back to us. Takes out as Jeff Bezos' pocket, goes in our pocket, you help the mind university. I'm very interested in what these choices are, because I think a lot of impulse stuff is out of print. Uh, yes, but luckily we live in a world of digital comics, ah. and so a lot of it is actually more accessible. Uh, I'm going to recommend to you the Impulse series, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Impulse, and DC keeps pretending like they're going to print, and then you pre-order it, and then they go, no, 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 no. Um, it is the best Bart Allen, the best bang for your buck, in my opinion. It's all Bart Allen all the time. I reread it for, I read it last year, and then I reread it again for this episode. Uh, it's definitely a 90s all ages comic series. So there is some really silly references to like uh, hacking and yo-yos and weird things that adult men thought children were into in the 90s. But Bart's journey in is super solid. His relationship with Max is really interesting and it leads him to joining Young Justice, which is very, very sweet. I am going to recommend this is in print. Young Justice, uh, we'll start with volume one, um, which the is Peter a, David a reprint of the original mm -hmm. series, yeah, yes, um, which is really, really good. And you kind of get to see what Bart is like as a leader and how he functions on a team, uh, which is adorable and silly. I am then lastly going to round out the recommendations with The Flash, The Fastest Man Alive. This is the 13 issue mini series where Bart is The Flash. This is an all digital option. Um, I think it's mixed overall. But it is interesting to see Bart be the Flash. And if you want to see that and you want to see what Bart is like an adult, as an adult, uh, this is going to be the most bang for Did they ever book. print it? Uh, as a collection? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. All right. Uh, but curious. it is not currently in print. It's way out of print if it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can enjoy. There is actually some really good art in there. There were some really good moments. Um, the cover is fantastic, the, the first issue. It's amazing. And uh -huh. I think... I think when you know it's an editorial mandate, um, I think Mark Guggenheim does a, a pretty laudable job with the ending. Sure. And then if you are an, uh, an Arrowverse fan, you can definitely see some of where, uh, I know Mark didn't work as heavily on Flash, but you can definitely see where some of the Flash television show storylines came from. Okay, Jason, I want to have a really, really quick discussion before we move on. Okay. Uh, so we're like 150,000 seasons into the flash. <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, that far, but everybody sure. knows that Barry Allen is the flash. <laughs> We've reset time seven or eight times. I'm sure. Um, should we have gone every season? Should we have gotten impulse before now? Uh, cause we're in season seven at the time of this recording. I believe so. Um, I'm going to say no. Poor K. Well, I'm going to try to keep this out of the television show just in case you haven't seen the TV show because they have introduced other characters mm -hmm. that I think have mucked up anything that you would do with Bart Allen. Mm -hmm. um, like they did a whole storyline with their fake daughter or yeah, their, their alternate timeline daughter. Their version of excess. Yeah, they, yes. they spent like two seasons on that. Yes, so Nora. Bart dings the same bell as that storyline because he's a grandson. Mm -hmm. And we don't even know at the time of this recording if... Their, their Bart is going to be a grandson. Their Bart could be their son. Their Bart could be a cousin. That's their true. Bart, he, is, you know, uh, he is a black actor, so he's. I'm assuming that he's that probably, was an intentional choice. He's some relation. He's probably going to be related somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we don't... I mean, I would go grandson, but you don't know. Like, they can... It's an adaptation. They Absolutely. can do whatever they want. So, um, yeah, I actually think... I actually am glad they waited. Um it's interesting because now that they waited on Bart, it makes me wonder if Bart is their spinoff idea. Because mm. you know, usually when you get a show get, gets around season seven, um, actors want to actors tend to want to leave between seven and ten. Look, Grant Gustin probably loves his job, but Grant Gustin, after doing seven years of running on a treadmill in front of a green screen, he's probably like, you know, maybe I want to sit on a beach for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I wonder if this is their spinoff idea and that they're throwing Barton here to see how audiences react to it mm-hmm. to see if like, well, maybe this is the new flash. Maybe this is the, we'll do an impulse show. Shows generally do that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they could, his name is technically Bartholomew Don Allen the mm-hmm. second. So you could literally, if they did that, you could call it the you, flash. You could have him say, my name is Barry Allen. I'm the fastest man alive. Yeah, and you could keep the show going. Yeah. Um, now, it, it'll be hilarious, uh, and I look forward to the crazy YouTube comments of people that are watching this. In months, the future? In the future, and they're like, duh, idiot. That's exactly what they did. And uh, if you do that, you're an idiot. But um, I don't know. That's uh, that's my weird prediction. I, I think any earlier, it would have just convoluted the show, and The Flash is a pretty complicated I mean, show as comic is. books There's superheroes just time travel always. all over yeah, the place yeah, yeah. Um, okay, i have one more question what, you, what, like, what was your answer to that question i'm incredibly biased because i love bart allen uh-huh um when wally left the show i would have brought bart on to replace him immediately like immediately immediately like oh, wow. that episode where right. when he leaves i would have had bart blip in at the end because you could just shoot it with a kid on a green screen and be like grandpa like just in just like in young justice the cartoon yeah sure okay uh i gotta help you whatever save time all right. That's exactly what I would do. Mm-hmm. I would have done it immediately because you preserve that original dynamic. And then there's, I think you'd still have done Nora. Okay. Uh, or, or whatever version of excess they were going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, uh, my last question to you, do they call him impulse or do they call him kid flash? Impulse. Impulse is a better name. It's a way better name than kid flash. I'm sorry. It just is. Well, Kid Flash is Silver Age. It's so, it's so super. Impulse also has a better costume. Uh, No, that was my sticker. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Uh, Okay, well, what's the the next thing we do, Jason? What's the teaching tweet? The teaching tweet is where, who knows in how many characters, (laughs) uh, Ashley is going to compose a tweet that sums up this lesson. And you can find this tweet at GHL Podcast. Seriously, you can go there, click on it, and you can see exactly what Ashley's going to say, but in text form. Take it away, Ashley. Bart Allen. He's the DCU best speedster. Send tweet. You're going you're gonna to write send tweet? Yeah, that's like a thing that people do on Twitter now. It's supposed to be funny. Okay. All right. What what did what is the, the weird... Do you remember in Young Justice, what was the thing that Bart said? Did he say crash all the time? Oh, uh, Bart always has stupid future His speak. stupid slang, right? Just like Terry. Like, this is so crash. I know. I remember I Robin think, saying whelmed all the time. I think that is from Batman Beyond. I think it's so crash. I think they stole that from Batman Beyond. But Batman Beyond has another dumb slang word, right? Shui. Yeah, yeah, I hate That's that. That's so shui. I hate yeah, yeah. that. It's so dumb. <laughs> all future speak is dumb. Yeah, I mean, like I'll what look, I grok Spock. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, look, it's no dumber than Fleek. Like I get it. Yeah, and then Legion of Superheroes has one too. They have like a they have like a really oh they do. They have and a curse Nora word. said it on Flash all the time. Oh God, what is it? I can't. Nora uh, also said Shway. Yeah, she, yeah, she um, did. Yeah, she did. I think Impulse said Crash. I've seen a bunch of every time I see a nice person at a uh, at a convention. Not that we can go to conventions anymore. Um, with a shirt that says Shway, I'm like no. I, I'd, I'd wear it on shirt. No. Okay. Unless you're going to sell it on two public. Then, you know what is Shway <laughs> though? The honor roll. That's right. What's that? And the honor roll is <laughs> where if you go to Apple Podcasts, not iTunes, Apple Podcasts. If you search for iTunes, your Apple Podcast comes up. I mean, iTunes still exists. I have it on my computer. Yeah. For some reason, Apple has made it to where that's the only thing I can play my old music on. I don't know. Are you going to give me a new thing, Apple? Are you going to? No. Anyways, Apple Podcasts. <laughs> uh, you leave a five star review. And because you help us in the algorithm, we read whatever you write. On the podcast. Yeah, you literally could write anything in there. We will read it. Ashley, mm. um, who who enters the uh, honor roll this week? Okay, I want to say that the first one I'm going to read is my all-time favorite five-star review we've <laughs> ever gotten. Oh, boy. If you know Ashley, we, you know where this is going. No, I mean that seriously. Oh, okay. Uh, this Never is like my favorite one. I thought this um, was this a joke. Is, this is not a All I right. love my fans. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is from JMO Warp. Mm. Who says this is the only podcast I listen to? Why are you reading this when you should be listening to GHL? <laughs> That's the best. That's the, I want that on a t-shirt. His name J Warp. It says J M O Warp. That's a great. So I'm going to assume that that is their initials. Sure. J M O. Uh, they were also joined by Dave. 1938. Were you really born in 1938? Same year as Superman. Because that would be awesome if our demographic stretch that far who says great podcast on all things comic books i've been listening to you guys for years and i'm sorry that i am just now leaving a review i'm not but ghl is just super jason and ashley do a great job with 101 infos on superheroes and other pop culture characters thank you guys for all your hard work and entertainment two so sweet reviews 
So what's going on in the uh, teacher's lounge, Jason? Uh, they get to enjoy a speed trap created by <laughs> Professor Thawne. Oh, yeah. What does Professor Thawne teach? Astrophysics, of course. Come on. <laughs> okay. Time travel and astrophysics. It's obvious. Uh, by the way, also obvious, go click subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher or any of the other places that you put podcasts in your holes. We'll really appreciate it. And if you are a Flash fan or you know a Flash fan out there, why don't you say a ski cash lesson to somebody out there in your crew? Be like, yo, it's a good speedster podcast. Uh, and while you do that, you should subscribe and click follow to GHL on all the social medias. And Ashley, where can they do that? You can do that at geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. And you can be like Scotty Boy, Sam Martinez, Alexis N. Bowen, at Abay Frace, at Cam Senses, Grod Frankenstein, Acadia Stevens at Deku's Multiverse, Nick Aronowski, Brandon Bolden, Matt Jacobson, Paul Graham, Drew Frisbee, Ken Rolo, Corey Burton, and at Spider underscore Hawk, who all requested this episode. Yes, and you can follow Ashley on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V Robinson. And you can follow myself on Instagram and Twitter at J-A-W-I-I-N. And don't forget, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash jaw, and that's J-A-W-I-I-N, where we do an episode every single week. Geek History Lesson Extra. It's more Geek History Lesson, but you can only hear it on Patreon. And Ashley, what are we going to be talking about this week? So this week, we're going to be talking about how Bart stacks up in the Flash family. What is he like next to Barry and Wally? What is his legacy as a Flash? It's going to be a real Flash war. Yeah. So come on over and listen to that. Get all kinds of extra podcasts supporting this podcast over at patreon.com slash John when we think all our super friends that do. All right, hashtag stick around the final segment of the podcast where we make sure you stuck through all the plugs. Actually, I know I torpedoed it yeah, early. I, you did. So uh, what are we talking about? Who draws the best Bart Allen hair? Because <laughs> Bart Allen is the only know. Flash who has an iconic hairstyle. Is he the only? I mean... Uh, Black Wally West has a lightning bolt in his. Uh, uh, that's true. That's which is true. pretty cool. I think that was added by John Boy Myers. I believe it was. Um, the action figure has it. I mean, for me, the best impulse artist is Mike Waringo. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are probably screaming. They're going, Humberto Ramos is, you know, hit the solo artist. But yeah. when I think impulse, I think that cover by Mike Waringo. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would assume, I don't know. I would assume Mike Waringo designed his costume too. So that's why I'm going to give a double plus to Mike Waringo. I'm going to say, I don't know the answer to that, but mm-hmm. I would also assume. So. I would assume. Yeah. Who draws the best impulse here? Todd Nuck. Todd Nuck? Mm-hmm. Oh, because he drew him in Young Justice. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, he draws my favorite version of the impulse costume. All right. Uh, but I do like um, the way where Ringo draws the bottom of Bart's shoes. I did not think that was They're going pointy. to be the end of that sentence. So, <laughs> all right. The end of Bart's. What did you think? I, I don't say? know. And on that <laughs> note, thank you all for listening to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Not Squiggly Hair Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Ashley, will you please close out this podcast? Class is now dismissed. <laughs>